Russia is a land of riddles wrapped in mysteries, everywhere from its north to south, east to west. Join us in exploring the largest country on Earth in our new series, Russian Life. We begin our journey near the Arctic Circle on the White Sea Archipelago of the Solovetsky Islands. This is the holiest site in Russian Christianity a wonder of medieval architecture and a jewel of nature. How did it become a place of suffering and humiliation for hundreds of thousands? These islands first became sacred grounds thousands of years ago when ancient peoples of the north festooned the shores with their mysterious boulder labyrinths. Some archaeologists believe that the stone labyrinths were built for magic rituals related to hunting and fishing. Others think they signify the mountains of the dead, a resting place for the souls of the deceased. Paganism gave way to Christianity, and in the 15th century, Solovki became a domain of the magnificent monastery, a citadel of the Russian Orthodox religion a military stronghold and the economic, cultural and political centre of the region. The sacred site was believed to be the closest to God's realm, giving unique power to the prayers of those who stayed on the islands. The Russians were always attracted by Solovki and have always sought to make pilgrimages here. In medieval Russia, the belief was that every Russian person had to go to Solovki at least once in their life. And the pilgrimage here pretty much replaced the pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Solovki's history took a darker turn in the 1920s when the Bolshevik Revolution desecrated the monastery, turning its cells and churches into prisoners' barracks. The rising tide of repression minced up to 350,000 people, criminal offenders along with scientists, artists and thinkers, through the slaughterhouse of forced labour. The whole gulag system was modelled and tested on Solovki. They found it convenient to place inmates on the islands to keep them in the frozen northern territories. They sent the most dangerous criminals here, those who acted or could potentially act against the state. That could mean anyone at all. Intelligent people understood what was going on in the country, so they became the most dangerous. Hard labor, disease and mass executions took the lives of five to seven thousand Solovki prisoners, crippling those lucky enough to serve their complete sentences and make it off the islands alive. Here lie hundreds, maybe thousands of inmates. All these birch trees, all these buildings arise over the mass graves. In 1939, the labor camp was shut down and scrapped. Today, the complex heritage and natural beauty of the Solovetsky Islands provides a livelihood for almost a thousand local residents, attracting tourists and pilgrims from all over the world. Any Russian, just like any other person coming here, can stop for meditation and try to answer the most important question of all. What am I living for? And what do I need to do to make my life right? With the historical monastery revival, the Solovki are making their way back to their original selves. Still, every Easter celebration here painfully recalls the tragic story of death and resurrection in Russia's Holy Land. From the Northern Islands, we moved to the Southern Mountains. For generations, the Urals have been Russia's industrial backbone. Today, they're revealing a new identity as a place of ancient heritage and modern recreation. We'll meet you there in two weeks, in the next episode of Russian Life.